Okay, so this is um, an actual question from a customer, uh, and it's kind of a good opportunity to highlight uh, some ins and outs of synchronous technology. So here I have a part, and this particular one was designed using ordered sketch-based modeling. And the question was, is was you know, how would I, in synchronous, change the distance from this point to the center of this hole to one inch? So to start, uh, let's take a look at how this would be done in a, in a sketch-driven, ordered environment. So let's say we wanted to do that, but we wanted to keep this particular thickness the same and this radius the same. But we have to increase this measurement here, which is currently 0.612. We have to increase that to one inch. So first things first, I'm going to go in, because none of these PMI dimensions are driving in order, we want to go into the right feature and edit its profile, the sketch behind this feature. So let's take a look at what we've got here. Well, right now I've got a driving dimension here. So I can start to adjust that, but as I do, you see that my radius is going to increase, and the sketch is just doing whatever it can to accommodate that change. And that's, uh, that's not what I want. So I'll just roll that back, and let's try some other combinations here. Well, I can lock this dimension down, but only if I turn this into a non-driving dimension by unlocking it and then locking this one. So now my radius is locked in, but I can't change this. If you think about it, there's only one way to accommodate this, and that's that I've got to add more geometry to create another face. So I've got to go in and delete this connection, which will allow me to drag this out, and then I can put a line in to connect the two. Now with that extra degree of freedom, I can go and select that dimension again, turn it into a driving dimension, and type in 1. Okay, so that's a lot of clicking, um, and uh, I'm still very constrained by how the sketch wants to react. But I've accomplished what I needed it to do. Let's take a look at Solid Edge and Live Rules and see how that works. So I'm going to switch over to this part, which was modeled in Synchronous. Exact same thing. Our dimensions are right out here. Now, one of the differences in Synchronous is that these PMI 3D dimensions, which you can place between any two points in space, these are driving dimension. So I'm going to start by selecting this dimension. And my live rules have come up. I'll just reset my live rules to the default configuration. So as I start to roll my mouse over this dimension, it's going to start making the change. And you see what it's doing? It's carrying this face along with it to change that. But we said that we wanted to keep the thickness of this back plate the same. So I'll just hit Control Z to undo and reset that. And let's uh, try some other combinations of live rules. Well, what if I undid this same radius if possible? Now, as I roll and change that dimension, the radius is going to adjust. That's another way of accommodating that distance change. But again, that's not what I want, so I'll hit Control Z. Let's try one more combination. Let's turn same radius on, but turn off this coplanar relationship. Because remember, this back face of this rounded piece is coplanar with uh, the front face of my plate. So if I turn that off, I should be able to move all of that without moving the rest of that plate. And you see, that's exactly what I want. So now I can reach in here, type in one, and it's done. So the point is, is that with synchronous technology and live rules, all these possibilities of design options are right there at your fingertips. And you don't have to go in and play around with sketches to get these what-if scenarios. That's part of the production gains of synchronous technology.